In this video, I talk a little bit about the Fluke 123 scope meter. Um, it's a really nice DMM, digital multimeter and oscilloscope all in one. Um, but I have a real problem with it. It's a real pain to charge, and that's because I don't have the official charger. So what I thought I'd do is I'd try and add wireless charging to it. So I'm showing you here what I did, and talk a little bit about how well that went. And um, yeah, I'm putting it out here because I'd love to hear what your ideas are on this. So let's get started. So today we're gonna to talk about my Fluke 123 scope meter. It's a really cool uh, piece of equipment, this. It's actually a two-channel oscilloscope and a digital multimeter in one. And it can do all the normal things a digital multimeter can do, like measure voltage, you know, resistance, capacitance, current, and so on. But at the same time, you've got that oscilloscope uh, capabilities built right in. And it's actually a little bit more useful than a normal benchtop oscilloscope in that it's not ground referenced. Because it's uh, battery powered, you can actually use this to debug, you know, switch mode power supplies and so on, where you might be putting the ground actually um, at a high side of something. Um, and what's really that, that usefulness, the fact that you can use this as an isolated scope, is actually probably one of the problems with it. Because in order to kind of maintain that isolation, they've taken the decision to recess the power adapter pin deep into the, into the case. So it's really hard to get in there, you know, you can't touch it or anything like this, so you get, get a nice layer, level of isolation. And if you can't source the power supply for one of these things, then um, you know, you're know you out of luck. It's a bit of a nightmare trying to get a DC barrel jack down there. Now I've looked at the um, the, the price of the replacement uh, power supplies for this and when you can get them, the price is like 200 pounds. And I paid, you know, I don't know, I think I paid 80 pounds for the scope meter, which was a bargain by the way. Um, but still, without the power supply, all I've got is this kind of terrible um, DIY job that I can just slide in there and I have to plug into my uh, lab bench uh, power supply and run 15 volts through it for, oh, I don't know, it takes like 12 hours to charge on the um, on the old batteries that I have in there. Um, and it's just, you know, once once the kind of threshold to, you know, charging it gets that large, then actually once it gets flat, and it always gets flat, the actual internal power ASIC actually is always on. Um, yeah, it always gets flat. So when I pull it out the drawer, it's flat. I have to wait ages for it to charge. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna use it, you know, not unless it's just ready to go. So in this in this video, I'm gonna try and add wireless charging so that I can just throw this thing down on my bench and that it's ready for me when I go, uh, when I'm ready for it, you know? And um, what I'm gonna, what you're gonna see is I, I got that working, but it's not really an ideal solution. And um, I'll revisit this probably at some later time once I've actually tried it for a while. I'm going to see how it works out, if it works with my, uh, you know, the way I work. So what I did here was I just grabbed what I had to hand. And what that was was a D1, a Wemos D1 uh, battery shield. So this is basically a 5 volt supply um, for a uh, Arduino compatible ESP board. Um, and you can solder a battery onto it and it can be charged via a mini USB port that you see there. Um, now to actually supply the power, I'm going to supply it through that mini USB port using these kind of flexible or semi-flexible uh, wireless receivers. If you look inside of them, they have a small coil down at the bottom. You can see that's backed by some kind of ferromagnetic um, uh, thing. I don't know what it is, but there's the actual coil itself. And just up above it, you can see there's a small um, switching board to actually control the voltage. And they output about 5 volts. Um, they're not particularly efficient but they are quite small and you can get them into tight spaces quite easily and so it was pretty much ideal for adding um, a, a charging coil very very quickly to the system so combining those two together um, and with a, a 18650 uh, cell and um, what you actually end up with is a small switch mode supply that has a, a, a lithium-ion battery with it that charges wirelessly and um, I can just pull the 5 volts straight off that. So then what I did was I took the cable harness out my current battery, um, which you can see here, um, and I just attached that then to that Wemos and wrapped the whole thing in Captain Tape. And the tape's there because, uh, well, I've been bitten by a battery shorting before. Um, it's pretty spectacular, the amount of current these things can deliver. Uh, so I'm a bit terrified by that. So I hink shrunk everything and added the captain tape, both to kind of anchor the charging coil down, as well as, you know, make sure there wasn't going to be a short anywhere. 
and as you can see this thing now charges just fine on the wireless charger so it's ready to be put inside the meter so i've added some foam there that's because the old battery pack was a lot larger surprisingly though not much more capacity than what, what you're actually seeing put together here at least if you believe the data sheet on the 18650 um, battery that i have so let's give it a go so the question is, does it work? Well, yeah, it does. With the battery pack in, the meter turns on. Even on its lowest setting, I can't see any noise in there. Um, the only issue is the battery indicator thinks the battery's permanently low. And that's because it's always at the battery voltage is a fixed five volts, um, regardless of what the actual state of the battery charges, thanks to that switch mode converter. Um, does it charge? Well, at first I had a lot of issues with it trying to get to charge. So I was trying it with a range of different chargers. Um, and in the end, I found that you could get it to charge, but you know, you just had to kind of get used to where you'd place the meter. And this large round puck charger really helped with that. And to be honest, I can get it placed pretty much every time now after doing it four or five times on each charger. Um, overall, was this project a success? I think so. I've started to use the meter a lot more, but there are still some issues with it. The um, charger doesn't switch off once the battery is fully charged, so it actually gets quite warm and stays quite warm down there. And I don't like the idea of my electronics being warm all night, so I found myself actually moving it off charge when I'm not using it. Um, uh, but the new battery, the lithium-ion battery, seems to discharge a lot slower, and it does seem to just keep it topped up enough for me to do all the work I want to. I've been using it for an hour or an, uh, an hour straight and never had the battery die on me. So I'd say, yeah, it, it's a success, although I wish it was a better executed success. Anyway, let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. If you've got an idea for how I could execute this project a little bit better, I'd love to hear it.